Hello and welcome to the MSA GX2 Quick Unboxing and Setup Guide. I'm Dean from MSA Safety. So we have the MSA GX2 Fully Automated Calibration and Bump Testing Station um, composed of a few different components. Um, in order to set this up when you receive it, you would probably need just a Phillips head screwdriver, just a small one, or like I have, a nice little powered screwdriver. Um, the power supplies which come with the GX2s um, and your um, rated power supply cords. So we will start with by identifying the different components of the GX2. The cylinder holder, the electronic cylinder holder is this one here. You can see that one. And we have a four unit um, gas detector charger, which is that one there. This one is in fact for the 4XR gas detector. All of these components will come in the same sort of box, which is that one. Now, the box itself, although generic, you can tell what is inside the box because if you look at the side, you will find that your particular component will be ticked and you'll be able to identify what is in there. So we're gonna unpack this box now and you'll be able to see exactly what is inside the GX2 box and comes with. So in there we have a couple of different bags. Quick start guide, um, a little ethernet cable, there's a DIN rail mount as well, so that will help you to mount this on a wall should you choose to. Um, a little pack of nuts, screws, barbs, plugs, fresh air setup, intake valve, which is that one. And that is designed to go into the top of the cylinder holder here. And that is to um, filter the air in case it's dusty. And that will mean that everything that goes into the test stand itself will be nice and fresh. You have barbs, these connect the GX2 test modules together, cylinder holder to the test stand itself, and you have the little white plugs. These plugs are designed to plug the holes and stop the unwanted intake. And then you have all of the screws too, and you also have one tiny little spare o-ring. This o-ring is designed to go into the top, the regulator there, should you need to replace the one that it comes with. Inside the box here we have the test stand module itself. This one is for the Altair 4X or 4XR. If you were to get one for the Altair 5X, it would look like that. So that's for the Altair 5X. If you were to get one for the Altair 2X, it would look like as a 2X, and this is your Altair 2X test stand, it would look like that. One thing to note with that is that you do need to take the little green stopper out of there, and that is for use with the Altair 2X and the Altair Pros. That must come out. What we are dealing with today is the Altair 4X, 4XR GX2 fully automated test stand. There is your Altair 4XR. And this is the proper setup for the unit. So the first thing that we need to pay attention to is to make sure that on the end here we have our fresh air intake set up. It's marked and the proper spot to put it in is shown. So make sure that that is in there. These holes do not necessarily need to be plugged. Um, so they can remain open, they're activated when additional cylinder holders are installed if required. What we do need to do is for the test stand itself, we need to make sure that we insert these barbs. So they need to go into all of these holes here and they need to line up. I'll just complete what I've started here earlier and put that additional barb in there. So if you can see that there, those barbs are now in place and there's five of them there and we can now make this system together. Push them together and they will now join quite nicely. We can use the screws, two in the back, two in the front, no, one in the front rather, and join this together. One in. And the front, you can see the two I put in the back from there, and then one in the front. There we go. And 
holds together quite nicely when you put them in properly. We then must make sure of one other thing. On the right hand side, as you're facing it, of the GX2 test stand, we need to make absolutely sure that we have all of these plugs in place. So your five holes there need to be plugged. And I'll just complete what I started earlier. And put that last little plug in there. And if you can see that from there, and that's vitally important that all of those holes are plugged on the right hand side of the furthest test stand. You can then, if you choose, connect the four unit charger. Now on this occasion, I'm just going to put one screw in here to show you how that will look. There it is. GX2 test stand completely assembled. And I'm going to put the plow leads in now. One into the test stand itself, one into the four unit charger, and that will power up. And I will be able to run a test with this gas detector. And it will hopefully pass, and we can see how this system works. What we'll notice also with the electronic cylinder holder is we've got a red band here. That's our visual notification that there is an issue. That issue will go away when I put a cylinder in there. So that band should then go green, which will signify that everything is good. Red bad, green good. If that was yellow, that would tell us that there is an issue to be dealt with, which would mean probably that the cylinder is within four weeks of its expiry date, which is default, although that is user configurable, or it's within 100 PSI of its expiry date. Now, once that has started up, and we'll give it a few moments, then we'll be able to put our detector in, turning the detector on first to make sure it's gone through its startup procedure, and once it's done that, we can enter it into the GX2, and we will be able to run a test. You can hear the GX2 running now, so it's sucking fresh air first, and then it'll apply some gas to the sensors. And this test it's doing is called a bump test, which is a compliance test to make sure that the gas detector is functioning, and it's the most basic test required by Australian standards. And that's what we need to perform before we use the detector. It's best practice, and it's what NSA require you to do as well when using their equipment basically asking the detector if it's working. And once we have a pass mark, the detector's compliant and ready. Green means good, so we've passed. Now take the detector out. The readings have already returned to normal. There'll be a ticket confidence on the screen, if you can see that, I'm not sure. And that will tell you that the detector's ready for use. It will also flash a nice green light on the detector just here every 15 seconds and you'll be able to tell that the detector is from a distance compliant. If that light was red flashing from a distance you'd be able to see that the detector was in fact non-compliant. So that is your quick start initial setup and unboxing of your MSA Galaxy GX2 fully automated test system. Thank you.